Uh-oh. Hello? Oh, there I am. Oh, it's like you shit for some reason. That was weird. It froze for like 30 seconds, and now you're you're backing up and running. Huh. I would say the new app's a little buggy. It just might be. just might be. Oh, well. Turn this back off so we have fucking glare. What do you deal? Like we always do, I have already almost completed my tea. Oh, shit. How about the Red Bull so I don't fall asleep on you? Mm. I'm sorry if I fall asleep on you, because it will probably involve actually falling, because I don't have a recliner <laughs> for a chair. <laughs> oh my god. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Super Happy Fun Jabatron Tea Party with Kiki and Bones. The robot revolution is nigh, my lovelies. Kiki? I'm grabbing a rubber thingy, I'm cold. Oh, a sweatshirt? We're not a sweatshirt, I'm not that cold. It's a long sleeve shirt. Mm hmm. Because, you know, we're in a heat wave. So the AC's still on because it's still not cool enough to open up, but just little old me in the bedroom is freezing because the AC goes off by the living room. <sighs> there we go. Where did I put my impression is Kiki. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> I'd be wearing more layers. You want to hear something awesome? It's 41 degrees here right now. In your house or in general? Outside my house, it's 41. Inside my house, it's 65. It is 73 muggy-ass degrees outside right now. Yeah, it, it's 41. We're going down to 27 tonight. You know what? I, I think these days I would fucking prefer that because I can just put on layers. You can only take off so much. Yeah, surprisingly, the cold is much easier to deal with than the heat because the cold, you can just bundle up. It, especially with not having to run the AC and shit. Yeah. Everybody would just bundle up. Well, like in my case, when it gets cold down here, I I actually sleep with an electric blanket. So mm -hmm. if it gets cold, the electric blanket control is, there's a laser printer right down next to my chair. And I really ever use the damn thing because we have a network printer upstairs. So the the control box for my electric blanket is actually sitting right there. So I can just go click. It's on. I have it on right now because it's hot. Uh, my but, controller's uh, behind yeah. me, but the blanket's all the way on the bed. But, I mean, which is nice to use at night, but when it still falls hot during the day, and I have a tendency to, you know, sleep through the day. Yeah. You know, sleeping for night is, at night is apparently for suckers. I wake up, you know, dying from the heat. <laughs> you poor baby. <laughs> Why must life be hard and filled with, or, and not filled with glorious pills? I wonder what would happen if we just kept you in a chemically induced haze. Do I suppose it depends on the kind of haze? I, I meant like, if we could just give you like a continuous strip of painkillers. I would love that, and probably would end up breaking something. <laughs> probably, could you just fall over and be like, I hurt myself, whatever. I'm, I'm a bit starting to question that I didn't do some, like, significant damage, because normally the initial falling pain eventually tapers off and just goes back to regular pain. But my left side is very much not happy. Yeah, you might have banged something good. I, I think I, I bruised my ribs. Yeah, I would say, 
I don't think it's anything permanent. No, I don't think it's that's... run to the emergency room kind yeah. of thing. I don't think you. I don't think you broke anything because that'd be excruciating. Like you mm-hmm. wouldn't be sitting here right now. Well, apparently I wasn't aware that I had broken my fingers when I broke them. So. Yeah, I've done that with my toes too. I, I would argue I was a kid and I was more freaked out about the fact that the swing broke while I was on it. I probably yeah. didn't realize it had broken my fingers. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, I was fully fucking aware that I had fractured my wrist when I was wrestling with my brother. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Hey, you dogs. Hi, Kiki. Hi, hi, hi. Bud. Don't fall asleep on me. Your sleep mocks me. I've got, like, I, I, I am, like, I am, like... <laughs> Like, I have insomnia, but, like, compared to you, it, it's, like, narcolepsy over here. <laughs> it's, like, you're at the point now where, like, you're sleeping when you're just physically exhausted, whereas, like, I just hit a point where it's, like, hey, look, it's... <laughs> yeah. Sleep is so wonderful when you only get it because your body is so exhausted that it can't stand to be awake anymore. Only you don't get actually any sort of good sleep. You're just kind of out for a while. And yeah, it's exactly. like, oh, we're up again. Because we still feel things. Yay! It is unfortunate. Anywho. Then we have topics. Let's talk about not things related to how much we stop talking. <laughs> how much pain Kiki's in. Um, if I number smile, one, it the number one topic when I asked you what you wanted to talk about was uh, and right after, th- and right after that was depictions of friendship in media, which I have no idea what that means. So I'm gonna let you start off with. I actually wanted to start with our last topic. Oh, okay. The uh, lack of co-op, co-op. 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 Hop Co-op. 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 Uh, horror games. I don't, I don't see, I don't think it'd be as horrifying if you had help. I think that, like, I, I thought about that today. A lot of people came to that conclusion, but I'm like, you could still isolate people from one another. In a, what, what am I, I'm doing this? No. Okay. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> You can still isolate, like, isolate the people. Get message, main screen turn on, how are you gentlemen? <laughs> you, all like, your face are blind to us. Damn Take it. your time. <laughs> Release all zig for great justice. <laughs> Somebody set us up the bomb. Like, Sorry, what you're saying? Oh, um, you could separate the characters from one another. And like, we're still playing the game together, but we're not actually together. See, the thing is, I think a lot of horror works out that psychological feeling of being alone and defenseless. Mm. And even if you separate people, the way game design is built and the way stuff is loaded, people can't get real far away from each other. So it's like they could separate you like a room apart, but anything more than that, it gets it gets twitchy trying to make it work. Mm. Like you could set it up where like like. You like you and I are playing a game where we're in like a haunted mansion. I'm just making a hypothetical Ooh, situation. Haunted mansion. It, 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 Craven Manor or Amnesia or something like that. And we can have it where like you know, it only loads what I see and only loads what you see, so it doesn't have to have our entire area loaded. But then you run into the problem that um, like triggers and stuff may not work right across the shared experience so it has to load everything at the same time so that if you hit a trigger i can hear the trigger because if i don't have that room loaded i don't see the trigger go off and then i have it triggered too that does say it would be easy but i can see a uh market for it or at least a a better way for us to play games together where only one person is playing where we we don't have to be in the same room because that's pretty much impossible for us because mm-hmm. we live in different fucking states. Yeah, we live halfway across the country from each other. I mean, there would obviously still be a delay, but the best I could do is stream a game to you. And I'm like, wouldn't it be easier if you could log into the game and, like, specu- spectate, spectate yeah. my session? Yeah. Was- well, what often ends up happening when you want to share a game with somebody is that basically you just record the footage and then play it back and then commentate. Yeah, and well... 
It loses all of its. Yeah, its, I like its organic, before. especially for horror games. You need that organic in the moment because one person yeah. already knows everything that's going to happen. I, I just feel like really for us at this point, it's like GMod horror maps or like Minecraft horror maps are like the only way to do it. And to be fair, like Minecraft has done a good job of building some really horrifying like psychological horror maps. Mm-hmm. Like, the witch's house? Like, oh my god. Like, that wasn't scary, but like... That was fun, um, especially that, since it's a recreation of a different game. It was a yeah. really good recreation, and the fact that you can just do that in Minecraft, and it's, even though it's technically not a two-player map, it didn't break when we played it as two-player. Yeah. Which is always nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, some, yeah. Some games don't like that, and sadly, because you have to mod the server, or mod back the server, we can only really play 1.8 games t- together. If, if they made a, if they if they ever get the server API out that lets you basically do like you do with the client and roll Just it forward roll it and back. backwards, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they're saying, like when the API comes out, that the server software will be upgraded to the point where your server, like when you start your server, there will be a screen like you get when you start the client, and it'll give you the option to change your profile. Which will be nice because otherwise you have to you have to go locate the old server software and run like a 1.7 server so that you can play uh, like the one that the Dogs Cast is playing right now, yeah. the Manor. Because there are a lot of great older adventure and horror maps out there that obviously Just aren't never got upgraded. upgraded. Yeah. Well, it's like diversity got broken. The original diversity got broken by 1.8. Mm-hmm, because they really changed a lot of redstone stuff. Yeah. I mean, all of his maps are crazy, or all of their maps are crazy. So crazy that we break them. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> someday videos will happen again. Yeah, when Kiki's feeling up to it. I, I have, because I was an idiot and didn't back up the premiere thingies. Yeah. I have, though, already gone through and found where it needs to be and uh, remade the projects and whatnot. It's just the actual editing and the graphics that I do. That's the time con- that. That, that's the time-consuming part. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's not a graphic I made before. And if, like, on a good day, my hands are not normally shaky, but I'm not having good days lately, so I have, mm-hmm. you know, shaky ass fucking hands. And it's really hard yeah. to draw at, no, at a level where you don't want to just snap the tablet over your knee. I just knocked over my cup. Whoops. That. Well, I mean, it has a lid. you should feel better. I, I've got, I've got an entire <laughs> cart full of anime that I want to watch that it just isn't happening because. I get up, I do work at, I, I, and, and for people out there, I, you know, I do a lot of work from home before I go in. So, like, I'm end up working from, like, I'm here at home in my office working. Then I, like, usually around lunchtime, I go into the actual office and work the rest of the afternoon. I usually stay till seven and then come home. When I come home, I don't really feel like doing anything. I end up just vegging out back in front of my, my office computer and just, screwing around and falling asleep while talking to Kiki at like 11 o'clock at night so like there's a pile of stuff I started watching and it's it's just gonna sit there because I want to watch it but I don't have any energy and and a lot of it is honestly subtitled so it means I really have to be awake and conscious and it's just not happening Mm -hmm. not to mention the people I'm working with are completely dropping the ball on me so I've been incredibly busy Poor cupcake. there's been a lot of there's been a lot of frank conversations between my boss and I about what to do with my coworkers because it, the stuff is just not getting done anymore that's just unacceptable yeah I, I'm having I'm having to spend a lot of this is why I've been staying till seven almost every night for the last few months because I'm having to stay late to try to catch up with their incomplete work. And it's, mm-hmm. like, slowly eating away at my sanity, because it's just... But anyway, co-op horror maps, yeah, it, or horror games are really hard to find unless it's a shooter. Yeah, like and, Resident Evil and, and most of the time those better. are just, like, kind of horrors. And I'm, after a while, that just gets tedious. I actually, I actually prefer, like, um... 
it sounds really weird, but like psychological thriller, like puzzle games. Yeah, th- I feel like those are more horrific. Because I mean, a jump scare is generally going to get me, unless I mean, well, because I, it's a I, fucking I mean jump like, scare. But that's not horror to me. That's yeah. Okay, go back to shooting. Shooting. So, I, I'm sure. not. I'm not even really into like horror in the sense of like there's a monster chasing me horror games. I like the. I like being like. You and I are in no real danger, but we're locked inside of a yeah. a fucked up mansion, and we're like, you know, trying to get our find our way out. Yeah, the 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 danger there is in you know, Orange really more realistic. I mean, even if you add like a supernatural element, it doesn't really have to be a monster chasing you. It just something has to be in your way. You, you take away your bit of control over the world. Make it a nice atmosphere I, I just, as well. I, I don't get into the games where it's like a supernatural monster is is the thing that's pushing on you to keep moving. Mm-hmm. I hate I hate those games. It's so like in the real world it would never happen because the moment you reached a point where there was like something chasing you, they're like you know. Like, oh, well, you're on the second floor of this mansion and you're locked in. It's like there's like a glass window right in front of you and a chair next to you. And you're like, um, you can easily survive a two story fall. So throw the chair through the window and mm-hmm. go out the go out the window. Well, the monster will chase you. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the thing. The thing the thing has been inside the house for 20 years. I'm not really worried about that. Once I'm out, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I, I I like more of the like. You know, something's wrong, and we're like investigating what happened to this yeah. family. Real or dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, the problem is like Amnesia did a really good job with the whole like there's a monster chasing you through the like you're defenseless, and the monster's chasing you through the castle or whatever. So now everything is basically a riff on that. Yeah, like all the new horror games coming out. If they're not like a Resident Evil fight the monster, it's it's like even the new Aliens game is basically just amnesia and space with more shooting. But yeah, space amnesia. Why well, hasn't anybody used a gun yet? Um, somebody got a gun. I'm watching like three different playthroughs of that. Movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. But in all rights, like this has been actually a pretty good year for horror. Just it's kind of the same kind of horror. That's mm-hmm. not necessarily bad. It's just at the same time, it also kind of is. Yeah. Well, they're going to come up with something new soon, because the, the formula is going to get stale before too long. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Aliens is always kind of screwed up, because Aliens is a lot of, like, humans versus each other, and then, like, humans dealing with aliens. Yeah. Or the alien xenomorphs, who are basically unstoppable. You know, they have an armored armored exoskeleton. Their blood is a, is, is a corrosive acid. And while being big, monstrous things, they also manage to be sneaky fucks. Oh, they're incredibly intelligent. They're a mm-hmm. predator. Not the predators, but a predator. Because that's a thing in that universe, too. Fucking yeah. Philip K. Dick. Yeah. That's Philip K. Dick's universe, if you didn't realize that. Yeah. This is the same universe that Universal Soldier and um, Blade Runner are from. Yes. They all take place in the same universe. You know... I'll give you Blade Runner, but Universal Soldier, really? Ew. Yeah, universe. That yeah, that movie Universal Soldier. That's the same universe. Uh, okay. In fact, one of the planet he's on is referenced by Harrison Ford in Blade Runner at one point. Uh, sure. It's it's like shy. It's really too bad because Philip K. Dick was had lots of mental illness and ended up basically dying destitute and crazy. Mm-hmm. Lack of a better word. I saw sugar. Sugar will make me happy. It'll save the beast. Pumpkin! Keep forgetting I'm Oh god, candy. not those. I love pumpkins. <laughs> As candy corn pumpkins. Mm-hmm. So Tommy has a corn really pumpkin. wax. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um. For a minute there, I thought you were going to fall out of your chair and I was going to kind of laugh a little bit. Shut up. <laughs> Just because my head felt like it was going towards the desk. <laughs> well, it was going towards the desk, too, I hate to say. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Because, um, going about horror games, a lot of people say Dead Space is really 
the great horror game, but I don't see it. Like I get it's that it's great horror. It's it I I get that it it can scare you, but I think it's the wrong kind of fear for me. Like it's just because yeah. after a while, it's just anger, anger at all the shit in the world, and having to kill it over and over again. And that that to me is not. Not a good horror game. That's just a shooter with a horror element, like well, I mean, Resident like, Evil game. Yeah, well, like, like if you play the original Resident Evil, it's it's horror in the sense that there's a limited amount of resources mm-hmm. and there's a shit ton of monsters running wild through the through the grounds and through the mansion. And so it's not really horror in the sense that you're defenseless. It's horror in the sense that your weapons work but are ineffective. Yeah. And the weapons are very effective. The ones that are, you know, fire based, the the ammo is incredibly scarce. Like it's it's a universal rule with like undead that fire is the most effective thing there is. And so when you play as Jill and you get access to the the grenade launcher that uses the canister, and you find the 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 belt of incendiary grenades. Mm-hmm. Like, they're like napalm canisters. They're super effective. They'll kill anything in one shot. But you have like six of them. It's super effective. Yeah. Well, you get you get regular grenades, acid grenades, and fire grenades. And there's like a ton of regular grenades, but they're, they're only really good at long range. You use them on like the, the reptilian hunter monsters. Yeah. But like the whole deal is, you get a ton of those, but they're only really useful on one enemy, and the enemy is super fast. So you have to like, you have to not be seen and make use of it, and point it in the right direction. And this is back when like you're like tank, like weird camera angles, and then like tank controls. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's fucked up because of the tank controls too. So you never like you don't like it's like modern games where you're like you know you you know you one one thumbstick will control all movement in an eight axis directional deal it's like you know one makes you go one stick makes you go forward and backwards one makes you go like left to right and it's super like awkward to be trying to shoot shit and being like uh, 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 uh. i don't know see i like i like games that were kind of like suspenseful like mist where you know something wasn't quite right, but it wasn't like it wasn't like you were in any real danger. You were just lost. Yeah. Although again, at least from my experience, Mist eventually becomes a what am I supposed to do kind of game. I still love them, but didn't they make a spiritual successor to Mist recently? I think they are. I can't remember the name of it. I can't remember much things right now. Your memory is shot. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, what was I going to say? Although, eventually, someday, down the road, when we finish the other games we're playing, I was planning on playing Dead Space with Grief, because I do have one and two on my Steam account. Oh, nice. And I, I, I do like to shoot things, so... <laughs> yeah. Because... Well, I- I'm not a big fan, but I like sort of a mythos. Like, it's it's very cliche, honestly, but at the same time, it's a nice kind of cliche, the mythos of mm-hmm. the Dead Space, which is why I like to watch people play it. So, well, it's like, like, Dead Space 1 was very much, like, was very, like, Resident Evil in space kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, number two has got a lot of, like, really fucked up, like, mythical and, like, psychological horror. And I really enjoyed watching uh, Jesse Cox and Dodger play three. Because mm. it's co-op and the one character is just kind of slowly going nuts, so their gameplay becomes different. That's a nice element. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, the people who made Spec Off the Lions really missed out on co-op, because that would have been fucking insane to play that game with co-op yeah where you're especially you know a mixture of the 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 descent into madness but also the ability to possibly argue over choices yeah and intercede like i might make the choice to shoot some guy and for maybe you'll get a quick time event that you see me lifting my gun and you have the chance to knock me over or something yeah. Which might make me personally feel ill towards you for uh, impeding my command. 
that would, would be, be really fucking interesting neat. to play to play one of the guys who's not going crazy. Like yeah. most players, obviously playing the main, like the colonel who's like losing his or the captain or whatever that's losing his mind. Mm-hmm. Although he's losing his mind, is that he basically like. It's really weird because, I mean, spoilers, there's this whole thing about at, at the very end of the game, there's the whole thing where you finally meet up with the big bad guy and he says, he's like, what were your orders? And you like think back to the beginning and you, and you, you, the main character, were talking to your subordinates and say this line like, our job is to get in, identify if there are any survivors, get back out and radio for support. And what you end up doing is basically like going deeper and deeper into the city mm-hmm. and, and all this shit happens, all these atrocities and this fighting, you know, and you, and you, the three guys fight your way to the center of the city to this guy. And he says, your mission was never to do this. Your mission was to report if we were here and, and get the army here, basically, you know, if we, if there were any survivors to bring the military here with, with aid and, and sort this all out. And there's this whole, like, there's this whole, like, fucked up, like, you just had to have a war. It had nothing to do with anything. You just, like, you had to, you had to be the hero. It's, like, fucked up. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. I mean, he, in all ranks, is right. Because, but at the same time, it's like, I could have done that, but I was also could have done this. And I remember I got to the point where you um, can can either I forget what the other option is, but it's it's either use napalm or something else. And I use the napalm because I'm like that that seems efficient. Let's just get rid of these guys. And then you learn that there were people hiding down there too. And I'm like, no, there is there is no, no your your decision your decision is whether you're going to use the the artillery pieces to launch white phosphorus rounds into the enemy base and you don't realize that that there are civilians in there hiding inside the mill inside the bad guy yeah. quote unquote base you don't learn that until you have to go down and through and you just have to walk through all of these people you have charred to death yeah and it's like dang <laughs> Well, it's like the, there's like, a, there's a whole thing, like, they go back, like, at the very end, they go back through all these, all those points where you to make decisions, and you find out, like, everything was fucked up, like, there's a part where you're, like, you hear the big bad guy through the radio, and it shows it from the perspective of your subordinates, and you're, and you're looking at a broken radio, and then there's, like, the one with the two guys, hang they're gonna be hung, and then, and, like, in, in reality, they've been dead for, like, months, like, they're dried up corpses hanging, mm-hmm. you know, hanging from the lampposts, and it's like, all this shit was in your head. Like, your perspective was, like, hallucinations. Like, you saw what you wanted to see, and, and your your guys were just so loyal that they were going along with it, but you could kind of see, like, like why they were getting kind of testy at the end, because you were fucking crazy. Like, it just turns out that your guy was losing his mind. And, and it all like it all gets sorted out in the end. Like there's all this shit where like they go back and they explain why your guy was losing his fucking mind. It was like, and it's just like so fucked up. It's like, oh my god, like the dude is losing his fucking mind. But it was like, what I was, what I was originally getting at, it's horror in a different sense of the word. Yeah. It's, it's real world, real world horror, not like horrible monster horror. And the whole thing is, like, you're never in any real danger from the enemies because you're, like, you know, you're far and away superior soldiers and shit. Yeah. And there's all that shit where you stop fighting, like, the random, like, you know, brown people, survivors, and start, you start fighting the American army remnants, and it's like, you know, and in your guy's remark, like, we're, you know, why is this happening? It's never really explained why... Like how it ends up that you're fighting them. Like they, they, like they kind of like gloss over why you're, why you're in a shooting match with, with U.S. soldiers who are, who have been stranded in, you know, Bahrain for a month after a massive sandstorm went through. And it's like, the game is just generally fucked up. I mean, it's based off of, you know, part of darkness. So that tells you, mm-hmm. you know, kind of what's going on. But it's just, you know, it's that kind of thing. Like, 
I, I'm not huge on horror, like supernatural horror, in the sense that it's not a lot of fun for me to watch because I can't suspend my disbelief when it's, you know, horrible boogeyman. Ooh, it's like. Like the shit with like the like the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, twenty teams have gone missing this summer. It's like, um, here's the thing, I don't care, I don't care how much you know, you know, college students' parents like don't give a fuck about them, quote unquote. If that many teenagers go missing, the authorities are going to start, like the federal yeah. authorities are going to start asking questions. And they're gonna track all this shit down yeah. to a specific area, and then they're gonna come through. That's that's really more popcorn or yeah. You're you're like it's it's dumb. I'm just watching it. And that's my problem is I can't I can't suspend my disbelief because like that was the fun thing about the remake was like the the all, the alternative ending that they del- that they didn't do was the one where the HRT FBI officers basically pour through the mansion and kill everyone. Mm-hmm. And find Leather Leatherface in his bed and basically shoot him full of holes. And they're like, "Oh, that's so stupid." I'm like, "No, that's what would happen yeah. if some dude was going around killing college students. They would, they would, you know, somebody's doing this is beyond trying to arrest. You just gotta basically go ahead and shoot everyone." <laughs> For me, I do and don't like supernatural horror. It depends. Like, because sometimes it's all re- often used, sometimes off- words are hard, it's often used as a crutch to validate stupid shit and horror, and normally the reason behind the Oogie Boogie is very dumb, mm-hmm. but sometimes it can be well done, or sometimes it's merely, you're not sure whether or not it's actually a supernatural thing, or if the character is just... Because of the isolated surrounding is, you know, just kind of losing their mind a bit. Because that can happen too. You're you're alone. You're in this creepy ass place. Shit is happening. You don't understand why. Could have a mundane exclamation, and it could not in certain, you know, genres. Are are you talking about like the Scooby Doo scenario where like the horrible monster turns out to be old Mister Jenkins kind of stuff? No, I don't mean like that. I I mean like where you don't really see a monster. Oh yeah, yeah. It's your your misplaced conceptions and whatnot. Yeah, there could be, you know. I that's more. I mean, I obviously still do also like some just straight up supernatural horror, but it has to be done well, and I prefer it from a still from a pseudo psychological standpoint, not just spooky ghost is angry, because often just spooky ghost is angry. What was really interesting because I was reading a I was reading an article from like the the American Psychological the Psychologists Association the people who put out the APA standards yeah um they they had a really interesting journal article research paper about um possessions like demonic possessions mm-hmm. as they related in like the 1900s and forward and what they've come to realize in present day is there's a there's a specific mental illness that is is more prevalent in women and it's due to a hormone in, like a hormone imbalance that closely mimics what they describe the symptoms of a demonic possession. Yeah. They talk about how the majority of cases in, in historical documents are almost always women. Occasionally it's men, but it's and, and they said this disease sometimes affects men, but it's rare. Like it's like one in a hundred, like one percent of all cases are men, and the other ninety nine percent end up being women. And it's really easy to treat. It's like like modern medicine can treat this disorder with like a set of like two hormone therapies, and it goes away. Mm-hmm. But all the shit, like all the crap, like you think about when you think of like the exorcist and shit. Like not not the really weird like like you know head spinning around yeah sort of stuff but like a lot of like the like the stuff like they traditionally talk about like you know symptoms of possession ends up being 
it they think it's it's actually a, like a mental illness. That would make sense. Like there's a legitimate mental illness that they're that they're studying that has a whole bunch of symptoms that are that are you know basically linked to traditional symptoms of a of a demonic possession. And they're like, well, that's just strange. You know that it never you know like fact is the fact ends up actually being stranger than the fiction because it's like it turns out all these things that we thought were you know the oogie boogie man tend to end up being just us being you know imperfect meat puppets and it's it's an entirely treatable thing uh, i would argue lots of things that we used to think were the oogie boogie back in the day were just you know disease well, I mean, there's a bunch of shit that's, you know, basically standard human behavior, not even yeah. particularly off of the off the line of normality that you know, that they considered some sort of horrible illness that because are Because it did not fit society standards. You were clearly the devil. You red headed demon spawn <laughs> with your left hand and whatnot. Sinister. Sinister but I mean, like, we wrote off a lot of stuff that's now, like, societally, um, not inappropriate that, that was considered, like, you know, signs that, you know, you were, you had been corrupted by the devil. Yeah. And not even, like, things that today we don't even blink at. Although well, there are sadly a lot of things that we still blink at as if it's somehow abnormal and it's really not, you know, anything having to do with sex, pretty much. Mm hmm. I, I I always I always enjoy I always enjoy the shit about you know we're gonna come to it anyway so might as well do it now than later because <laughs> we always do we, <laughs> we had the com we had the conversation yet again at at Nick's place about birth control I said you know the majority of women that I talk to they, they say oh you know all the women are taking it just so they don't get pregnant I'm like the majority of women I talk to are taking it for hormone balancing issues that's like you know keeping your period from being horrible. Yeah. Like, very few women that I've met, you know, family, friends, acquaintances, it, it's not, he, really, the majority of people I've met are not taking it solely to prevent pregnancy. A lot of it mm -hmm. is, like, I don't want to have a horrible period every four months. Like, I don't get oh, it every God. month. I get it every quarter, and it's horrendous. Or I get it twice a year, and it's, like, something out of a horror story. You know, and, I, and I'm simply a man, you know, by a standard relating things I've heard, but I mean, I've heard about shit where you know, like, you know, I had a, I, I've had a female acquaintance that got it like for a while. I was getting it twice a year for a month at a time. Yeah, it was like fuck that shit. Pretty much. Um, I mean, you still get the added bonus of baby projection, sort of, but yeah. There's a lot of women out there who take it either to regulate or to just fucking get rid of it because fuck regulating it. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes well, they don't. If you're not, if yeah. you're not trying to procreate, there's not really any point to it yeah. being around until you're trying to procreate. I mean, the honestly, uterus. it's the truth. This, yeah. this is the future. If, if you're not, if you're a woman and you're not procreating, there's no reason for it to happen. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna be miserable for a week or two weeks or you know whatever it ends up being personally for you and w why have it happen if you're not trying to if you're not trying to have a kid? There's a there's a large portion of women's lives where they do have periods but aren't trying in any fashion to procreate. Well, it's like that. It's like that. Uh, it's like that comic I always see pop up where it's like. The girl's like, I feel great. It's a beautiful day, and all my homework's done, and blah, blah, blah. And she's super happy, and then it cuts down to her stomach, and there's like a smiley face, and it's like, all right, I'm all ready for the baby. Um, I'm not having a, oh, <laughs> she's all like bent, doubled over, like, oh, God, it's so bad. Fuck I'm you, I'm like, not having a child. <sighs> I think there's another panel where it, like, it turns into, like, a really mean-looking face, and it's just like, fine, fuck you, ah. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. <sighs> and the computer is very unhappy, and it's like, fuck you, I'll get rid of all this nice work I did, and start all the fuck over again. 
<laughs> like, no, uterus, stop. <laughs> Why don't we just come to agreement when I try, then you start making it. <sighs> Well, while on the flip side, there are many women who just, in general, have difficulty having offspring, so. Because oh, it's, yeah. it's both simple and complicated. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that's the thing. There are some couples where they look at each other and she's pregnant. Yeah. And, and there's some couples, yeah. like my parents, personally, tried and tried and tried and tried and did all this stuff and couldn't, and, like, my mom couldn't conceive. And they were like, fuck it, whatever. And then I was conceived. Like, as soon as they stopped trying, spent all this money, like, I think it was like six months after they had given up, that my mom, my mom, it only, it only happened one time, it never happened again. Like, they tried after I was born, it never happened again. And it was like... I can never remember if I was the last, or if the miscarriage was the last, because I can't remember if the miscarriage happened before or after me. Mm. But essentially, yeah, I'm a failed bisectomy baby. So mm -hmm. was my sister Jennifer, because my father had to have three, because they kept because he had extra uh, lines, vas deferens. Yeah, called? yeah, and they but they were super small, so they couldn't they didn't initially see them, but they were still big enough. Yeah, for sperm to go through. Yeah. So yeah, life is strange like that. Mm -hmm. So he had the vasectomy, had my sister Jennifer divorced that wife, had the vasectomy again. Uh, eventually started dating and married my mom, and then have to, had to have two more. Or, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. But yeah. Uh, so, uh, I wasn't planned. <laughs> it just kind of happened. Mm. To be fair, my brother wasn't planned either, but he's not a failed sexy baby. He's an oopsie baby. Yeah. I think he's a failed comedy baby, actually. Yeah, that's that's entirely. <laughs> but my mother has only had oopsie babies. <laughs> Always fun. Keep your eyes open. I can see them dragging. No, Cupcake, don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Again. Okay, I gotta get this. I gotta get these pumpkins away from me. Eat the whole bag, do it, do <laughs> it. That will involve so much vomiting. Yeah, I can't imagine it ending well. <laughs> and I'm really tired of the whole vomiting thing, so. Oh, I bet, I bet. Uh, let's see, what other? Um... I have to go into work early tomorrow for a required webinar, and it makes me so sad. Mm -hmm. Poor cupcake. I was going to go in and just do basically paperwork, but um, we got a thing from HR saying, I was supposed to go to a, a, like a meeting across town at a, like a, like our whole company. And I, I've been on jury duty for the, you were aware of this, but I've been on jury duty this week and next week. And so I can't be more than half an hour away from basically my home because I may be called at any time to go in an interview for a jury, you know, to sit on a jury. Mm -hmm. Like, I got dismissed, but they told me, like, look, Cupcake, you know, you're dismissed, but if a case comes up that we need jurors, you may be called, and we will call you and tell you you have, like, an hour to get here. And I'm like, this this, this convention center was, it's like a two-hour drive from my place of work, which is like a 15-minute drive from my house, whereas the the courthouse is, like, two blocks from my house so basically if i go far like if i go farther than work i'm not going to make it back in time in order to do the thing and so i'm just like i have to sit in a webinar for two hours tomorrow for stupidness this has been cupcake whining anyway <laughs> you know that's what pretty much the show is i whine about my stupid useless body you whine about work yeah Occasionally we whine about social issues and video games and anime. Yeah. And food. And food. Delicious, delicious food. Mm. Man, I want pizza. Sorry. It was good pizza, pizza, though. I had um homemade Chinese food for dinner. It was Ooh, really yum. Sweet and sour pork. Mm. That was like my first meal of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I had some chicken nuggets at work, and then, like, my dad called me. He's like, you going to pick up a pizza tonight? I'm like, I can. He's like, oh, you should do that. I was just going to come home and have, like, a peanut butter sandwich. 
Yes. Be a good song and bring home the pizza. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad. It was only like 13 bucks. You and your stupid properly priced little Caesar. Ours only properly priced on Wednesdays. <laughs> It's crazy because my pizza was five bucks, but like my dad was like eight. I was like, oh my god. Did you get one of the fancy hot and ready's? He got a mushroom. Ah. So it's six dollars because it's a custard pizza, then I have to pay a dollar fifty extra because it's must mushrooms. I was like, what? <laughs> I want to try their pretzel pizza. I do two kind of, but I forgot to order it today. But I think here it's like it's almost ten bucks. It's eight here, so yeah. yeah. I think I'd feel a bit better if it was eight. I guess it's not a standard pizza, but mm-hmm. in general, I don't have a lot of money for you know eating out anyway. So mm-hmm. uh, let's see. <laughs> we haven't really gotten to watch a lot of anime together. No, I'm sorry about that. It's been a lot of sleeping on my part. Mm. Well, it's not like we. have been awake at the same time in general lately. Well, that's that's been the problem. Like, I generally catch you right before you go to bed when I wake up in the morning, and then I'm at work all day, like, you know, because I wake up, we'll say, like, 6.30 in the morning. I mm-hmm. talk to you for a little bit. You go to bed, because you're like, oh, my God, I'm tired. I've been awake all night. Mm-hmm. And, and I come home, and I talk to you when you wake up, like, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, my time. We talk for a little bit, and then it gets to be, I get tired and crash, like, 10, 11, midnight. And then that cycle just continues yeah. where we're like, neither of us is awake at the right time. Plus, I've been working like almost every day, so I haven't been yeah. home. And the nights that like I am can be home, I'm out hanging with Raid and my friends because I'm just like, fuck, I don't want to be home. Although I don't know how much more I'll be doing that because with it getting colder, it's it, like when it gets cold here, it just gets hard driving long distances. When it's nice, it's not bad, but like when it starts getting like cold and shitty. Like, when we start getting snow and stuff, Mm -hmm. I stop going really far because it's just the roads are never in good condition. And not, like, not right now. I'm talking, like, like Christmas time and later when we're, like, in full swing winter. And Uh, I guess that would be the downside of winter in really actually get cold areas. It's all the fucking snow and slush and ice. Yeah, I mean. Only northern, northern, super northern California deals with that. It's one of those things like <laughs> if it's if it dry for more than a couple days, the roads are basically fine. They're just like they are the rest of the year. But like any time we get any precipitation at all, they just and not even like they're bad. You can easily drive on them because the roads are always treated up here. Mm-hmm. Like they always have salt and sand and the icing fluid and all that shit poured all over them because nobody wants to have to worry about somebody doing seventy and hitting an icy patch ten feet long and going you know careening into a you know a tanker truck full of gasoline and just, you know like really bad scenarios happen because somebody didn't spray you know two dollars worth of de-icing spray on a major interstate intersection or some shit mm-hmm. yeah. um so it's not that bad but Ray, Ray lives across the city from me it's like a uh, it's like a 50 minute drive when the weather's nice and so it's like an hour and a half when the weather's shitty mm-hmm. and like a lot of times especially like now it's starting to get dark at like six o'clock and so it's just it just gets harder and harder to want to go any. I, I'm one of those people, like, when it starts getting dark early, I just, like, just want to come home and sit on my ass. And I give Raid shit because he doesn't, like, when it gets bad, he doesn't drive out here either. Like, he just comes out here during the summer. How dare he? I know. What a douchebag. Mm-hmm. I tried to get him on tonight, but he's busy. And yeah, we've had to work. I, mean, oh, I, 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 I suppose I could have roped new girlfriend into it. But does she really want to hang out with us dweebs? I don't know. I don't even know <laughs> if she's home. She might be at her grandparents, so. Yeah, I have no idea. Mm. Oh, okay. I will be right back. Do not fall asleep. I'll try my best. Oh my god, do not fall. I have my cane. It's okay. I swear to God, if you come back here in like twenty minutes and tell me you fell in the kitchen, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna survive the laughing fit. Shut up. Let me go pee. I got back before a couple of days.
sit in the chair, lean down, not fall over, put the down, got more icy tea. Is he pouring water or is that him peeing? Kind of sounds like pee. Hmm. Got me some summer sausage too. Mm. Nom nom nom. Nom nom nom. Waiting on a cupcake. Mm -hmm. Living off sugar, eating pretzels. <laughs> Apparently, Cupcake was hiding behind his recliner. I was trying to sneak up, but I realized I wouldn't be able to actually get over here without being seen by the camera. <laughs> oh, Alright, my legs up. Welcome back, Cupcake. I feel much better after taking a whiz. So oh, you're peeing, okay. Oh, yeah. I, I said that. I said, I'm gonna go pee while you're busy doing whatever you were doing. I heard I, I gotta get a drink. But when I come back and heard it, I'm like, is he peeing or pouring? <laughs> no, I, I, I have my drink. That's right here. Mm -hmm. Actually, almost gone. I have refilled it. But it's surprising that I'm not having a heart, like, I'm not staying awake because I'm like, I've had a shit ton of of caffeine now, but you're, the, you're clearly mushroom. already crashing. Mm. Mm. What are you eating? Summer sausage. Oh, nice. Very good, very good. The place in the mall that that you know pops up when fall starts coming around and yeah. sells all that crap. They yeah. always over order, so the grocery outlet, which is a surplus store. Is always filled to the brim with super cheap shit like this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to do gangbusters and they do like half of what they actually ordered. Mm-hmm. That actually happened for a while at the dollar store next to my work. There's a, like a Dollar Tree or whatever down the road from our office. Mm hmm And I constantly was buying, um, like... Like, you know, like, when now, like, when companies, like, companies that make, like, um, drink mixes, not drink mixes, what am I trying to say? Mm. Like, Kool-Aid powder kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, they'll test, they'll they'll try new things, but they won't, like, they won't turn out. And so then, like, the dollar store will get, like, a ton of, like, like, of, like, those single-use, like, you know, bottled water flavoring packets. Mm -hmm. So they've been buying, like, like the, uh, they had a ton of the, um... Uh, uh, like the Hawaiian punch ones, like purple and blue and red and yellow and all kinds of random shit. And it's like, they're not bad, but what what ended up happening was the reason why they ended up not getting sold was that they don't completely dissolve in water. Mm. Like, you get, like, crap left behind. So they're, they're not defective. They work. They flavor the water, but you get, like, goo at the bottom of your bottle. Mm. Mm, mm. mm. Alright. Now I've shoved stuff in my face. <laughs> now that Kiki's fed her gullet. Let's see, what else to talk about? The thing with the stuff in the guy. Mm, I'm excited for Twin Peaks. You would be. Yes, I would be. I love Twin Peaks. Just like I love the crappy game that is Deadly Premonition, which is a homage slash knockoff of Twin Peaks. So it's very nice that it's coming back. There's a surprising number of shows that are just remakes. Um, case in point, Grace Point, which is a remake of Broadchurch, which is a British show. Are you still there? Because you're not moving. Uh-oh. Did I lose bones? I may have lost bones. Shit. Um, minor technical difficulties. Oh, crap. Fuck! I'll just sit here, chewing on pretzels until I can get them back. Crap. Mm. Shit. Well, hopefully eventually I'll get some sort of contact from the phones there. But uh, I guess we'll stop it here because he can't seem to reconnect. For whatever reason. I'm assuming his graphics driver died again or his computer went blah blah blah. Exactly like that. So, uh. Stay tuned for part two, assuming we haven't invaded by then.
still alive. And welcome to part two. And we are recording again. Hooray! Welcome back, Cupcake. I have returned from the land of blue screens of death. <laughs> what were we even talking about? I don't even remember. You started to say something and I got I got blue screen. Meh, whatever. What would you like to talk about? Oh, Survivor blue screen. Uh so. Mm-hmm. Uh Crunchy Roll is gonna start carrying the kiss close. Well that's awesome. That is I a think. lot of anime. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what, a couple thousand episodes? No, no, no. Don't they still make Case Closed? What now? Don't they still make that anime? Probably. I was never really into it, so I didn't pay that much attention. It takes a big leap. If it was a short anime, I would buy it, but that kid has been whatever, cursed poison and whatnot, for so fucking long. Oh, uh, yeah, it's still ongoing since 94. Great. Or, no, that's when the manga started this. TV series started in 96, and that is also ongoing. Oh. That is a lot of anime. That is currently 753 episodes of anime. That's a lot of anime. Wow! Jim Henson Company is making a Labyrinth sequel. But can anyone ever stand up to David Bowie? You just have David Bowie in it. I thought David Bowie was dead. David Bowie's not dead. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I assume I just assume anybody that was popular in the seventies and eighties must be dead by now. No, he's not dead. Well, he's only sixty seven and say. he's still good looking. Well, I would hope so. He was fucking phenomenal then, and I think he was in his 40s at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, Stupid Cowboy Bebop special editions. No. I don't even know if I well? really want them, because I already own it on, on DVD, and I'm not like in a hurry to own it on Blu-ray. I mean, I looked at the the, the inherent screens, but Cowboy kind of, Bebop kind of, it was already a good-looking anime. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, really, there's only so much you can do with old animes. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're good scans. Don't get me wrong; like they help. But here's what I've told everyone: unless you're unless you've got like a 55 or like 60 or 70 inch TV, the Blu-rays don't really make a huge difference for most mm-hmm. people. Like, I, I can tell on my computer monitor, but that's because I'm si- I'm sitting two you know mm-hmm. two feet away from a 26 inch monitor that's you know mm-hmm. 1900 resolution which reminds me at some point I need to buy Blu-ray software for my computer again but just don't I'm just not going to give them $75 and not I'm sick of having to spend that money every year just so I can watch Blu-rays on my computer like if I had money <laughs> and was building like a media room or a theater room then yeah Blu-ray because I'm going to have a giant ass screen but mm-hmm. even just for like a living room, yeah, I, you know, I, I still like fucking stream everything. So, well, that's the other problem. Like they were talking about like the future of of Japanese anime in America, and it was like basically the majority of people now just stream everything. Mm-hmm. People like me are a rarity, and I understand that. I'm. I only really collect anime because of the dubs. If they stopped dubbing stuff, I would stop collecting anime. That's the only reason why I don't buy a lot of the Aniplex and NIS products is because there's no dub. There's no point for me to spend $90 on something that I can stream for free. <laughs> Freaking pants. Having pants technical issues. Oh, just sitting here causes my underwear to ride up on me. Aw, no. I just realized I'm leaning over. I should just go forward and lean back. There's something most women never have to deal with is the fact that 
squeezes out the circulation in your balls. The worst feeling in the world. Ugh. Honestly, I don't know what it's like to have balls. Well, just... Women, grown women have asked me as a man why why I feel the need to wear boxers, and I always respond with the same answer. You know, women are like, well, it, you know, underwear that's tight to me has never bothered me. I'm like, yeah, you don't have shit hanging off your crotch. Well, not as much as a man does. Oh. Uh, nothing worse than having a pair of weight tights or squeezing off circulation. Ugh. I suppose that would be like wearing an ill-fitting bra. That's about the closest approximation a man has to, like, picking a bra is finding good underwear that fits well. I mean, most of my issues with my underwear is wedgies. I mean, the biggest, the biggest problem is, honestly, this is going to sound really bad, but if you're even moderately well endowed, you got to have loose underwear, because otherwise you're just dying. From the, the squeezing. Mm. What was next on our, our list of stuff to talk about? I don't even remember. Halloween stuff? We can talk about that. I, I don't really have an opinion on Halloween because I don't really participate, but if you have stuff to say, I'm all ears. Well, Halloween is still like one of my favorite holidays because A, I love to see kids in costume. Mm-hmm. Not in a creepy one. No, not at all, not at all. You no, know, just running around with friends, getting candy and shit. I also love crappy, like, B-horror movies. Or monster, I love monster movies, like Godzilla and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And that means the TV's going to be flooded with them. And I also really love tacky Halloween uh, decorations. So I really, uh, Halloween, I really enjoy just sitting at home, watching Stupid ass movies with my weirdly decorated front area handing out candy to kids. This is like my favorite holiday. Interesting, interesting stuff. Yeah, super interesting. I'll be working this year, most likely, so. The part that sucks is coming home when I do, I'll be probably coming home right into the fucking mess, so that'll be fun on a bun. Aww. Um, I don't work, so. I will be home. <laughs> like I used to. <laughs> Probably might have to work you in this Halloween fall. Friday? Oh, Friday. It's a Friday this year. And then, yeah, he'll probably have to work. Wait, is game on a Friday? Or on that Friday? Oh no, it skips that one. Okay, no more. He's like, are we gonna record? And I'm like, oh god. <laughs> I mean, if he has to work until closing, whatever. Except for the fact where you have to work, but. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm done at like 7. Um. Now, if you don't, haven't noticed, I like, you know, crappy movies and tacky shit. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Well, at the same time, I don't like, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Cliche Hollywood films and most of what is mass marketed. Not in a hipster sort of way, just in a, it's a very bland sort of hodgepodge of crap. And I either want to laugh at the stupidity of, about, of it or enjoy the complexity of it when it comes to stuff. Yeah, I have no opinions on Halloween. I just try to stay out of it. So then let's move on to something else. Like, um, did you see the video of, uh, Nico and Letterman? Yeah, that was interesting. How weirded out he looked when he was waving off the end of the segment. Like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> uh, virtual he's like, he's just like, oh, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> I'm retiring soon, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost like Macross got it right. Almost. Almost. I mean, we're not flying around having space wars and shit, but give it a little while, clearly. 
Mm. Yeah, so. Okay, I should probably move these pretzels away so I can uh, eat all of them. So yeah, Halloween. Mm -hmm. This is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. That's gonna be all over the TV too. I can no longer decide if I like The Nightmare Before Christmas anymore. Like, it's not a bad or anything, just kind of blase about it now. Probably just oversaturation. But it's everywhere! Mm, let's talk about the risks. I can see your socks. They are the best socks. They are dickies. He's walking mm -hmm. on dicks. <laughs> yep, that's me. Uh, pardon? Oh yeah, Naruto's ending. Well, the manga's ending. I can't believe they're finally gonna finish it off. Like I said when I... Either you or I said that it was ending, I wasn't even aware it was still fucking going on. I knew the anime was, but... Well, it's like they... Like, a lot of those guys, they talk to them. I mean, the the Naruto, the guy writing Naruto was just like, he's like, I'm running out of stuff to, like, to write about. He's like, I've, I've taken the characters about as far as I can take them, so I have to either end it or, you know, like, change up who the main focus is going to be on. You know, have him ascend to supporting teacher role and have a new generation pop up. Mm hmm and then you have the guy. You have the guy writing One Piece. You're just like, I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of ideas. It's like I could go on for another ten, fifteen years. It's like, oh my god, what? Man, One Piece is also long game. I suppose that's a bit different. I don't. I, I'm not well versed in One Piece beyond like general specifics, but I suppose there's a lot you could do with it. I mean, people, the characters don't really age, right? As opposed to in Naruto, where they get older. Mm-hmm. So, when you have characters who actually age, there's only so far you can go. <laughs> and more I mean, things you at... need to realize when, you know, you need to fucking stop. <laughs> well, I mean, like, technically, like, even in, like, One Piece, they, they age, but, like... His, like, his issue is that his style's changing so much that, like, they were, like, pretty normally humanly proportioned in, originally, and, and now when you get to, like, the later stuff, their proportions are just, like, wacky and cartoonish. Mm. Like, everybody makes fun of, of Nami from uh, One Piece, where her proportions, you know, she's pretty, you know, pretty busty initially, but by the time they get to, like, episode 500... Her waist is like as thick as her arm. Oh. I can probably pull up the picture if you want to see it. I, I knew the women of One Piece were generally, you know, modeling with boobies proportion, but that sounds horrific. Here, hang on, let me see if I can let me see if I can find the the, the image. Looking up images. I'm not saying I'm gonna be able to find it, but there's somebody posted a thing showing like, like episode like three, episode a hundred, episode three hundred, episode five hundred, and it was just like it just got more and more outlandish. You probably find it before I do. No, I got distracted by a tweet. Adam Sessler just tweeted, "What the fuck? What the fuck? Fuck!" with no context. And I'm like. What? Why are we what the okay. fuck? <laughs> you what that fuck, motherfucker? <laughs> what the hell is the character's name? Nami. Shut up, chair. Go back up. I found a couple of breast comparisons, but what I'm looking for is the one... There was one posted a while back that was like, like four or five like in a row showing full body. Mm -hmm. and it was just... It was horrifying, like, what had happened. Oh, you know what? Oh, I know God. How. He found some of them. 
Well, I'm just looking at her wiki page. I'm like, wow, that is skinny. Like, like her, her believe, arms don't didn't... make sense. Yeah, believe me, originally proportionally, she she made some sense, and she's just been getting progress. Like the the proportions have been getting progressively weirder with time. I originally saw it on Reddit. I think it might be an anime. It might be an R anime. Oh, no. it, again. it was just like in the last couple of days. I'm not on Reddit very often, so. No, yeah, I don't expect you to. I'm just. I'm just scrolling down her wiki page because it's got screenshots for Saga. Just looking yeah. at her chain and I'm like, what? I really understood because um, the R anime subreddit has been doing a lot of stuff with um, comparing like original broadcast of anime to the Blu-ray redos. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the stuff is crazy. How much of this, like the the um, like how much the quality improves. Like they do a lot of stuff like post production. Oh, I gotta be getting close. I'm recognizing some of the the posts. Come on, come on. Super reels. Two days ago. I'm in the right area. It was it, it was there it is. It was posted on a on a thing of a gif of her uh like giving Luffy a piece of meat and him just going hop. And they were like, Look at her character design, that's a blast from the past. Oh, I think I'm getting close. I gotta be getting close. Yeah. I'm gonna find it. I am. Because I, I recognize this. Oh, I think I found it. Yes, I did. This is what I wanted. Okay. Hang on. I'm gonna post this. It was an imager link. That's why I couldn't find it. Copy. Now, these are, except for the very last one, these are not doctored. These are the actual stills. The last one they're extrapolating. They're making a joke. Jeez. Now, look at her episode 5 form. Mm -hmm. She's thin, but she's not out of proportion. Even 155 isn't terrible, given that it's a cartoon. But by the time you get to 550, it's just like, what the hell? What the fuck? Like, somebody with proportions like that wouldn't even be able to live. Their ribs would be crushing their organs. I mean, and you give it a bit of benefit because it's a cartoon, but if that's not how she started out, even if she's aging, holy fuck! Alright, her tits are literally, one of her tits is literally the size of her head. Mm -hmm. Like, give or take, her tits are as big as her head. It's just insane. Even even in 380, they're not they're not even as big as her head. Like by the time we get to 550, they're literally as big as her head. I showed you. Now, mind you, this is because this is because the guys the guy's drawing style has evolved, mm-hmm. and that's like the style he's going with, which is whatever. But it's horrifying because it's like, oh my god. And you know, and it's a stylistic choice, obviously. So it's not not like he's trying to replicate, you know, anything in reality. But it's like, holy shit! Somebody built like that wouldn't be able to stand upright. There just wouldn't be enough support. Nope. That's horrendous. So there you go. We started talking about that. I had I had to try to find that. And it's just like, oh my god. And it's not just her. I mean, all the female characters have gone through a similar transformation. It, it's definitely his his style that they're replicating, but it's just like, holy shit! For fuck's sake! No, that's right. I keep forgetting about the live action Pathway verse. Oh, the yeah, the movies. Yeah. Yeah, those. I keep those getting are gonna be to cool. watch them. Cause the Six part? Okay. 
And then the fifth part is coming out. They released a tr- teaser for the sixth. Okay. Gotcha. Teasers. Well, what's so funny is his, like, his proportioning for the human body is just horrible. In general? Yeah. Like, if you ever see any, like, full, like, full-length sketches of the girls, the proportions are just terrible. They got gigantic feet and hands and, like, really thin, lanky bodies. Mm. But, uh, yeah. She's <laughs> So what were we talking about? Uh, I like piece. lost. I lost track. I didn't mean to come to one piece, but we said I said something about her, and then like had to go dig that up because it, it made me think about it. Like when I saw it, I thought about bringing it up, and then forgot about it until we started. I somehow got back on the topic here. Well, and he's constantly harassed about that by his editor and the fans that his drawing style is just horribly. Like, yeah. not proportional. I think it's also partly just trying to sell the characters, too, because a lot of it is, like, goods sales. Mm. So, you know, make them more appetizing, I think the word I want is. I don't know. What was the topic we were talking about? Now I'm like, uh... We started yeah. with the Naruto ending and we moved on to... Oh, yeah, it. yeah. Because we also talked about Case Closed and how fucking long I that was. This, did Bleach finally finish, too, or is that still running? I don't know. I think Bleach, it's got a I lot think of the Bleach these... anime is actually coming to an end. We have a lot of these <sighs> long-running, what, shonen? I, I know, I know the, guy, the guy for One Piece yeah. that he's not... He's not ending it anytime soon, so that's still going to be long running. But I uh, thought the manga was to an is end. ongoing. The anime ended. Okay. So the manga is still, still ongoing for Bleach. Yeah, 2004 to 2012. Didn't so the anime just... popularity of Bleach like take a horrid downturn? I think so. I'm like, I'm trying to remember news I've read or looked over because well, I'm like, I oh, I don't what, watch that anime. I think what happened was, didn't the author, didn't the author, like, have to take a break? And then they had, like, like 150 episodes of filler, and it just, they couldn't, they couldn't get back the steam after, um, like, after the filler ended and they went back to, it wasn't like Naruto where, like, they kept it going because what happened was they moved too fast and then they had to wait for the author to write enough material to start the next season. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times that's where the filler exists because they're doing it while it's still running and they, they catch up. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, we'll say, like, the guy's been writing it for four years, and they start in on, you know, year three, and they catch up in, like, year five, they've caught up to him. So then they have to take a year off so that he can write more material, or she can write more material. Which is really funny, because cause I want to say, like, like a lot of, like, the, the Magical Girl animes, I think, were, like, the, the mangas were already basically done when they started the, the animes. Or maybe it's just that they were more closely involved, because it's like less like a mass-produced thing. I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason yeah. for everything. Like, yeah, we're, no, we're I... speculating about Bleach. I'm not sure. Maybe they just wanted to end it. I don't know. I mean, I could probably, I could probably just, you know, go on Google and say why, like, you know, reasoning for Bleach, Bleach anime ending, and it would tell me, you know. I'm sure they interviewed them and asked, you know, why is it ending? Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm just curious to see where it says. <laughs> Here it is, 2012 to end. I guess what ended up happening was they... In order, in order to get, in order to get to the highly more popular arcs, they cut bits and pieces of the middle arcs out. Like they shortcutted a lot of stuff in the middle so they could get to where it was currently at at the really popular stuff. But doing so made them miss a whole bunch of stuff that would have reduced the filler. And then because the filler went for so long, um, um, filler went for so long, basically. 
it lost momentum and then they could never pick the momentum back up. Mm. And it's still popular, but not popular enough to for a company to put money down to produce an anime of it. Because much like here, the TV show is just a mechanism to sell product. Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of what happened with Inuyasha. They just like, you know, they had they had two they had too many seasons near the end that were mostly filler, and it just it killed the the steam. And the same thing happened with Veroni Kenshin. Season three is filler because they were originally going to do season four, which was the last like set of books. Yeah. But season three was terrible, and it lost all momentum, and then they never got season four. To be honest, the final books are hor- horribly depressing in comparison to the rest of the TV show, so I'm kind of glad they didn't. It ended up being the OVAs. I think it was Death and Rebirth. Not Death and Rebirth. That was the NG um, Betrayal. Ah, fuck if I remember. <laughs> I have them now. They're here somewhere. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> what am I, some kind of clown to you? Yes. Don't answer that. <laughs> Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Mm. Oh, well. I am a giant banana. I'm not a banana. So yeah, Camp Lizard is finally going to take the 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 last its last bows and move on to the great uh, beyond. I wonder how long it will take the TV show to get there, but. I think the TV show has been keeping has been has been keeping pretty good strides, so I don't think it'll be mm. too long. I, I still refuse to watch Naruto because I watched the first six episodes of the original anime, and I'm like, nope, done. This is so boring. And I, in general, it's, I don't tend to like long running shonen because it's yeah, shonen shonen titles rely on being basically junk food. Yeah. I already have junk food with like slice of life animes and magical girls, so Yeah, but see, but those can be original. Yeah. Like those are like a lot of the really good ones are built off of being different from each mm-hmm. other. I mean, as much as I hate to admit it, Madoka Magica is interesting because it's a deconstruction of magical girls. Like if you take magical girls and put them in a real world scenario yeah. where there are there are there are prices to be paid for the power. Mm. Which I mean, particularly I enjoy the I enjoy the card capture Sakura school of magical girls, which is just it's like cute girl doing shit. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of like there's a lot of messages with that about like you know like the clamp ladies really did a lot of stuff with like all the different forms of love and mm-hmm. even some of the stuff that isn't really technically appropriate. Mm. Um. I've seen a lot of uh, sort of school slice of life all girl cast stuff lately. Really, just becoming uh, pseudo lesbian fan service. Yeah, and it's really depressing. Not that girls aren't touchy feeling, but like uh, I watched all of uh, Yui Yuri. Or Yui Yuri. Yeah, I know you're saying. Yeah, you, yeah. Yui Yuri, whatever. And like, the first few episodes, I'm like, this is really cute. I like that they're friendly with one another and whatnot. And then it just became, they were all assaulting each other. It's like, this isn't funny. This is not how real people act. That that girl, regardless of what triggered it, oh no, she can't help herself, is assaulting her friends. It, it would be fine if they just all had feelings for one another and were exploring them, but that's not what actually is going on. You just want teenage girls making out with one another. Oh yeah, wasn't that like wasn't that like the whole premise of Sakura Trick? Uh, kind of. I only watched the first episode because I was like, nope. Not because it was horribly fan servicey, but it was very it's much. Boring. It was boring, and it it didn't really have its issue. And apparently, everybody is a lesbian. It's like. I get that that could technically happen, but really right. only a significant amount of the population is of well, a certain I mean, sect. And, and it's like, it'd be one thing if you were trying to make a cute story about lesbians trying to figure themselves out, but that's not it. Yeah. You were just trying to make, ooh, cute lesbians look at them make out and not actually deal with issues or anything. 
just be cute about it. I'm like, no, that's 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 not that's what not I was really promised. one with an all girls school that I really liked and they kept they kept um like suggesting that they were gonna do like fan servicey shit but they would always pull back at the last second. Like there was a beach episode where you're waiting to see the the president, the student council president who was like a really, you know, really you know, she's like, you know, she was a senior and she's really like shapely and blah 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 blah. And then when they finally got to, like, they went to the beach and, like, all the guys from the neighboring boys' school, you know, snuck in and had their, like, super long telescoping, you know, camera lenses and shit. And she came out like a 1920s era, like, swimsuit, like, covered her whole body, super loose. Hmm. It sounds familiar, but I don't know what that is. Hang on. That sounds hilarious, though. I, I gotta find it. I can't remember what it's called. Like, um, going back to, like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Best student council. <laughs> you want me to grab a... <laughs> Literally, here. It's... <laughs> ah. Best student oh, council. Oh, the girl's got the puppet. Oh, the, okay, yeah. Okay. I know what you're talking about now. It's freaking adorable. It's not magical girls or anything, but just a, it's an all girls school, and she joins it, and they make her, I think, like the treasurer or something, and she basically just hangs out with all the cool girls. It's a great show. It's adorable. Um, we watched what was it? You you ski together, and that's a better version of. Essentially, Yuri Yuri, which is yeah. girls who are affectionate with one another, but could be or could not be romanticized. But at the same yeah. time, it's just girls being girls because we generally are, at least in my experience, rather affectionate with uh, close friends, but in a realistic, non-assaulty way. Like occasionally you push boundaries, but not not like that. And it was it was terrible because I was like in the first few episodes, and you get some great gifts out of that show too. But it's terrible. I I can't recommend Yuri Yuri. No, yeah, and well, the real problem too is Yuri Yuri only came, it was an Aniplex title, so like it only ever came out on Blu-ray with only subtitles, and it was like mm-hmm. eighty bucks. Because I mean, I'll I'll watch almost anything once. <laughs> If it's short enough, I'll watch all of it, but right. even if I don't like it, unless it's really detestable at the start. Well, like, like, I never finished Vividrid Operation because no, fuck you. Uh-uh. That's, like, that's like, sexualizing, like, fucking young-ass girls. This one, like, everybody complained how stupid it was, and... I like, um... How do you say that? Haganani? Haganani? Yeah, it, it's... It translates both ways. I don't have very many friends. I mean, it's, and, a, it's a bit yeah, at times, but it's it's nice enough. I mean, I got season two, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was I thought it was really fun, and I, I like the you know I like the interactions of people who are like you know I don't have any you know I don't know how to make friends, so they have the let's make friends club. Mm-hmm. It, it was fun because you know obviously the girls really like the guy, which is what it always is. Mm-hmm. And he's talking, you know, he keeps talking about how he has no friends, and his sister, his little sister has no friends, and then at the end of season two, you find out that he's, like, the most popular guy in school, and his little sister's the most popular girl in the middle school, but she doesn't want to hang out with anybody but her brother. (laughs) There's, like, in this denial that they're not, they're not popular. It was, it was, well, you, know, you could was, be popular and still not have friends. Oh yeah. Uh, 
You're making me fake about stuff. That's why I'm standing up and looking at my collection because I'm like. <laughs> yes, mm. I'm getting a lovely view of uh, Cupcake's belly. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, how, see, that's like a hairy bagel. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, pretty good. I mean, I used to be like out to here, and now I'm, I'm into here. I'm almost even with my pants line. Almost. Yeah. Working on it. I mean, even like, like Okami-sama was really cute. Or Okami-sama mm-hmm. and her seven companions is it's just an adorable show about a girl and her friend and the club that they're in. And- that's made just to solve people's problems. Like, literally, their club exists just to solve problems in the school. Students have problems, they bring it to them, they try to figure it out. But it, it's completely impossible to have a stupid show full of fan service and still make it have a message that's, you know, useful and interesting. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, like, Icky Tosin, which is basically a show about books of girls beating the clothes off of each other has a message about going against fate. It's your fate to die. And it, the, the villain is told, you will die at the hands of the main character, and he goes against his fate and tries to prevent it from happening. It still happens, but she ends up going against her fate and actually successfully breaking the cycle. You know, you don't have to be what people tell you you have to be. Like, it's your destiny to be the greatest warrior in China. <laughs> That would be weird if that was my destiny. No, I, I know. I don't mean you personally, Kiki. <laughs> I think we can all agree you're not really into being the greatest warrior in China. Not in China. But I mean, sometimes sometimes the stuff just doesn't make sense. It's like, you know, it's like in hindsight, like you look at like Su- Shinji Akari from Me and Jesse Evangelion. Like, he should be ecstatic. He no, so, I, he, I get where Shinji's coming from. I do too. But at the but same I mean, time, he could have gone the other way. Like, I get where people were coming from and how they find him annoying, but at the same time, he's. He, no. A lot of people would, you know, be he, exactly he, like that. He, he's a 15 year old boy living with two women that fawn all over him and a third that routinely tries to hang out with him. Yeah, but was, you, you have to take into his, You have to take into account the life experience beforehand. Yeah. Um, and what else is going on in life? It's like, yeah, it's nice that you have these wonderful women. But, you know, you're also being forced to fight in a giant robot who's not actually a robot, but the angel it, spirit it, thing of your mother yeah. and your dad's. It's a biomechanical and, aperture or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The soul of his mother resides inside I mean, it, the When you take an account into all the Crap. Shinji makes a bit of sense. I mean, his father basically just comes around the fact that his father and most of the men in his life are pricks. Yeah. And that in the in the world in the world where his mother wasn't killed in the accident, it's a much it's a much nicer place. Mm-hmm. The angelic what they call the angelic days uh universe where his mother doesn't die. His father doesn't turn into a massive prick, which basically undoes all of the horrible shit that happens with the with the second like the second awakening or whatever. Second impact. Yeah. The third impact, I can't remember. One of the impacts. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while and I but haven't seen much thing, of like, this, shit. that alternative universe where he wakes up and his mom's still alive and she's like, you know, she's like screwing around with his father in the kitchen when he comes downstairs and uh, Masato is a teacher at his school and Ray is a, an exchange student from California, and Asuka's known him since they were kids, and mm-hmm. it's this, like, slice of life thing. Like, that ends up being, like, the universe that he inhabits, like, like, chemically. That's where he ends up. When he, like, comes to terms with this shit, he recreates the world, and that's, the, basically, he goes back and fixes the, 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 the spark event, which is his mother dies in the accident, and her soul is fused with the evil one. Yeah. By preventing that one event, he undoes everything that leads up to the second impact. Because when his mother doesn't die, his father doesn't turn into a psycho, 
which just basically stops the entire chain reaction right there. First impact still happens, angels still appear, but the world is a much different place and is much more ready to fight it because his father isn't crazy. Yeah. His father isn't crazy. You've got more stable people in charge. Able to make really, you know... And because of this, you know, Oscar's forces. mother recovers from her stuff and ends up not committing suicide. And so then Oscar and her mother and her father, you know, Oscar's family moves to Japan to be at like Nerve headquarters. And so then they grow up together. And so Oscar doesn't turn into a fucking crazy bitch. Well, I mean, she's still kind of a crazy bitch, but it's a whole different story. In in, in a general summary kind of way, not yeah. I'm actually a crazy bitch because I have a very valid reason to be a crazy bitch. I mean, I like well, that. They all, they're all they all out there, but they all have very valid reasons to be out there. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying, though? It's like this whole thing, mm-hmm. like, where he, he goes back and looks at everything and realizes that everything went off the rails because his mother died. When Mrs. Akari died, that sent everybody else... You know, because she was like she was like the linchpin that kept all the people, all the side characters, and everything that were involved in the story together. Mm-hmm. When she dies, everything goes spinning out. And the biggest problem, of course, is that his father is like the leader of Nerve, and like so he just goes completely batshit crazy. And well, really, it was all about trying to reunite with Yui, mm-hmm. but it just didn't happen. Oh, and my headphones just died for me. And Malbums can't hear me. Hello, Momento. As I hook up my wired headphones. Bones can't hear me. La 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 la. Bones can't hear me. La 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 la. I knew that was coming. What? What was coming? I didn't do a thing. What's up? I think exactly. <laughs> okay. I wasn't making fun of you or anything. Oh, oh yeah, I actually it wasn't. Out of the will. No, but I wasn't actually making fun of you. I was just sitting here singing. I guess I'll never know. <laughs> Ow, I cut my mustache on that. Ow. Oh. Red Bull disapproves of Cupcake's mustache. My mustache! Mustache! But, uh, yeah. I'm not a kid. <laughs> oh no! Whatever will you do? Eventually get more. But how? With my leg bendoops? Yeah, but we know how much you like to fall flat on your face. Hey, that's not true. Normally I fall on my left side. I don't know how it's always so my just fucking a pillow left side. Left hip and call it a day. <laughs> it's either it's because my right side fucks up and I catch myself on my left side, or everything fucks up and I just tumble the fuck over. Uh, and always oh, manage to hit the left side. Uh oh. Cannot kind the server. What? What? What server? What are you doing? Uh, I'm not, I'm definitely not hacking your network. No, not at all. Why would you hack my network? What would you want on it? To get at your secret, secret information. I don't keep shit like that on my computer. I think DVD profile is just down. Oh, That's actually what I'm doing. I'm checking my profile and stuff. But I know, I mean, you know, like as far as like anime goes, I've I've watched a lot of stuff that should just be stupid tripe, but I've I've found what you might call valuable messages on occasion. Yeah. I mean it all writes lots of things are problematic really but still enjoyable. It, but... Like, because nothing is full of fucking sainthood. That's impossible. But at the same time, some things are so problematic that there's no saving them. Being messaged by Grieve. Oh, Grieve says hi. Well, good for Grieve. There, I've fulfilled my contractual obligations. I see. Did you finally get home from work? No, she's not home until 11. 
Oh, okay. Which is why she's not here. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh oh, Kiki's going down. Get the pillows. Get the pillow in there. Nice big stretch. Wake up. Maybe I'll sleep tonight. Maybe you will. And maybe I'll grow gills and breathe like a fish. Do I have to exclusively breathe like a fish, or can I switch back and forth? Uh, that's a good question. I have no idea. Ah, there we go. Did they get refused? No, no, they just haven't been checked yet. That's all I wanted to know. Why is my shit not moving? So, yeah. What were we talking about? Uh, problematic shit in animals. Mm. Really problematic shit exists in any form of media, just with people. Sometimes it's there for the point of the story, and other times it's just there because. Because Raven! You're feeling with your headphones this morning. I'm just trying to turn the volume up. I can't remember if I had to do it on my desk or if I could do it on the headphones. Ah, okay then. These are screwy because they're, when they're in, uh, when they're in recorded mode, it's all, it's all done at the source. Mm. When you're in wireless mode, then it's, you, you do it on the actual headphones. When I have to use my, not just at my foot, there's no idea. It's a rat! Maybe. Uh, when I have to use my wireless, there's volume controls on the, because I just plug them into the speakers. Mm-hmm. So I just use the speaker controls. Because these don't last long enough. No, that's my they? problem with those too. Well, I use those for like an hour with uh, whatchamacallit, so. Mm-hmm. Why do I have Tumblr open twice? What is going on? I, I, I don't know. Stop I it. don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm enjoying the new Doctor Who. Not that it's not still without its problems, because, yeah. But it is. It's, it's enjoyable. It's becoming more enjoyable. Not that there weren't enjoyable parts of the 11th Doctor's run. It's just a lot of not enjoyable parts and a lot of flippy table stuff, because Stephen Moffat is a misogynistic asshole. So who can, who, who at the same, same time can sort of write, but after a while it's like, you're using the same fucking gimmick over and over again, you really shouldn't be in charge of the show. Mm-hmm. I think that's my biggest issue with uh, the 11th Doctor. Was like, like, Steve was Moffat like the, in charge. The shaping thing with like TNG was like, they talk about, like now these days, they talk about like, why uh, Star Trek The Next Generation improved so much in the later seasons. It was basically because after, uh, I can't think of his name, after the original creator died, and not that there was anything wrong with him, but like the people, like, the people that were originally doing it left after he died, and they got some different people, and the different people were really good. And they did a lot of like really good stuff with the show, and it improved immensely in the later seasons. So yeah, anyway. I've never been a huge Doctor Who guy. Like, uh, it's okay. Like, I don't have a problem with it. I just don't like really. No, I, I get a lot it. of people can't stand it, but it's it. I love Doctor Who too. Well, it's not like I don't like it. I'm just not interested. Like all the Doctor Who like actors have been really good. And there's nothing wrong with the show. It's just not my cup of tea. It's not a lot of British television for me. My friends got all like bent out of shape because I wasn't into British television. I'm like, it just doesn't do it for me. It depends on the British television. Sometimes I don't get their comedies. Well, I, especially their comedies, but like, I, I watch the I, first... Literally, I normally, wow, words are fucking hard today. I, know, I usually like, like, pseudo-comedic pseudo shows, but... And their stand-up comedians, but a lot of geared towards younger people com- com- comedic shows are very much... Mm-hmm. Well, it's even like it's even like me and my buddy sat down and tried to watch um, Fry and Laurie, which are Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry's 
they like, just kill when they were younger. That's and a good like, show. we're like, this show is dumb. Like, we we couldn't even get it. Like, we're like, I mean, they're good actors. Like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what they were doing, but the the humor was just beyond us. <laughs> It might be a both, cultural gap in general. We're just sitting there like, okay, all right, okay. Mm. Um, I do enjoy a lot of their drama because it's it's American drama is often very soap opery, mm-hmm. and which is why I don't like most American dramas. Yeah. Whereas British dramas are more, you know, real world dramatic. It was like us. I really. I really enjoyed Sherlock the first time through, but I, I have no interest in watching it ever again. That's another show where I'm like, I really like this, but it's so problematic. Because that that's another Stephen Moffat thing, and apparently Stephen Moffat doesn't understand what a lesbian is. Ah, 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 ah. And he, like, writes the same fucking woman over and over again. Oh, sure. But, um, my favorite, uh, TV version, uh, modern TV version of uh, Sherlock Holmes and Watson right now is Elementary. That's a great show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still enjoy Sherlock. I think it's mostly for the actors and less for the writing, though. <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. It's one of those days. When you were disconnecting, I was talking about American remakes, and I was talking about Grace Point, which is a remake of Broadchurch, which is a British show. Yeah. I mostly feel weird because Broadchurch is not that old. It's like a year old, maybe? I feel like they're remaking it just so that an American audience will understand it, while it but I, you could just show the British version. Mm. It even has the same lead actor. He's just feigning an American accent. Which is a bit weird, but... I mean, I'm still gonna watch the fuck out of Grace Point. But... That, that's America for you. We can't have British shit in America. It's gotta, it's gotta be American. <laughs> I'm looking at Tumblr for things to talk about. Because... Uh, yeah... Um, anime, Gravity Falls, Yogg's Cast Crap, Avengers stuff, makeup, Cute clothes I can never afford or actually walk around in because I would fall over. So many cute shoes. Uh, wrestling stuff. More cute clothes. Gravity Falls is a great show, but I have not watched enough of it to uh, yeah. commentate on it. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen like four episodes. Same for me. Because I'm really behind on watching shit in general and a lot of the stuff I end up watching at any consistency is because the hubby and I both watch it, but even then we're behind on shit. Um, we started watching Avatar, The Last Airbender, which I'd already seen, but it's nice to watch with him. We just recently started season two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we're done there, hopefully we'll get to watch Legend of the Flora. I'm looking for I started to. watching Korra, and then just, like, after, like, season two, just kind of like, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah, I heard that it gets a bit muddly, but, yeah. It was new and interesting with Aang, and then with her, it's kind of like, eh. It's not a bad show, I'm just like, eh. To be fair, I had the same feelings about, oh, God, what was the one I just watched? I had to fight my way through some anime that I picked up because I got like halfway through and I was like, this show is really dumb, but I didn't want to drop it because I only had like six episodes to go. I don't remember now what it was. But like the vast majority of shit that I pick up, I just start watching and I'm like, this is not that interesting, honestly. (laughs) Pretty, you know, formulatic. So, yeah. Um... There were some new shows that started airing, but I can't remember dick about any of them because the one about my the, brain the needs to shop looks hilarious. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that one. Hopefully, we'll get to watch that. Um, I just got the notice saying episode one's available to free users or whatever, or oh, maybe it's tomorrow. We're we're getting close. It was five days when we checked like last weekend. 
So we're getting close to the next, the first episode being available. No. I'm still enjoying Sailor Moon Crystal, even with its problems. Oh, yeah. It's still enjoyable. Both and I don't share are so a minor. lot of the same issues people do, so. Here's the problem. American viewers, the people who are complaining the hardest, are used to getting stuff after it's already finished in Japan. Mm-hmm. And thus, the, the streams we get are the cleaned up streams, or like the cleaned up product that you would get on DVD or Blu-ray. And so we're used to getting, like, not the raw material, but, like, the actual, like, finished, refined, you know, they've had a couple of months to work on it yeah. product. And so we're like, oh, my God, they've made so many mistakes. It's like, okay, they're not even showing it on TV over there. Yeah, they're even showing it on TV over here. This is a net product that's being pushed out very quickly. I know Toy, is a, Toy Animation is a big company, but that doesn't mean everything gets everybody's focus. This is a limited animation group. A lot of it's being sent overseas and then attempted to fix when it comes back. So that's just how you have to do it to get it done quickly. And Ooh, yeah. there's going to be some off uh, model mistakes. Well, animation the stuff like in the- general, even the best animation out there has mistakes. Or things that people say are mistakes but aren't. They're just like an animation like slide or something to make the movement look right. Yeah. So you happen to have paused at the right fucking time to see the frame that was never meant to see on its own. But I meant more like some of the story stuff. I don't have some of the same issues people do. Oh, I thought a lot. I, I haven't had any issue with any of the story stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of people but think I mean, that, like, the Inner Scouts are being shown to be weaklings compared to, like, yeah, oh, they are yeah, and it's like animals. they're they're all just starting, and it's like I know Gamora was able to punch Zoisite, but that was like a sucker punch. He could do shit after when Zoisite realized he was there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if if we're talking like the end of Stars, and she's getting her ass sent to her by you know like the four generals, it's like it's it's time to. You know, have her be at least competent. Yeah, you're expecting in-game prowess from starting game Senshi, yeah. and that's that's not. You saw he barely fucking understands how to, her, her powers work. She tried, which I give the show very much benefit. They still fucking try, and Venus obviously could do shit because she's been doing shit longer. She's more in the know than they are too. So yeah. Like, if this shit was still happening later down the line, when it really shouldn't, I would have a concern, but I don't right now. They they can't always win. Well, it'll be interesting to see her near, like, the end of the initial run, because I guess they are going to make it to the Dark Kingdom arc? Yeah, apparently they are. So that'll be, that'll be fun to see. Mm-hmm. You know, when she's had some time to, you know, get stronger and whatnot. I mean, even in, like, the original series, like, between season one and season two, like, prowess went way the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Like, even, like, you know, when her, all of her, or her memories are reawakened and, and are, she's, like, actually, like, legitimately, like, kind of stronger. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's one of those things, like, you know, you can't expect that the, you know, the page that becomes, you know, the greatest knight of the realm to be the greatest night of the realm when he starts his journey. It has to be. I think that, that might be a cultural thing because a lot of Western media, the the guy who doesn't have all the trainer and whatnot is just Joe Schmo is actually like the strongest badass ever. It's like we're expecting of that, whereas other things we see them grow. Yeah. Where for the longest time we didn't have that in. Um, American stuff. You could, especially like, just look at Power Rangers. The leader, the Red Ranger, tends to be a guy who it should not be the fucking leader, first off. And has either zero experience or has experience in a different way. And somehow they're the leader. As opposed to the person who is, like, well-trained and shit really should be the leader because they're a stable fucking human being. 
because it's just a moving shirt. Oh well, I'll continue to like Crystal and you can yell at each other to group mouse ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, I, I, like, I guess I'm just like not easily offended or not offended, but I'm not easily disappointed and stuff. Like, because like, if they don't like what's going on, then all the more power to them. But at the same oh, time, yeah. don't get in the way of me trying to see the show. No, exactly. Because I still enjoy it. I mean, I've I've been impressed with every episode. Like, I haven't found any of them to be wanting. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially the one, this last one, where you have Umino just being, like, a complete freak in front of them while they're eating lunch. <laughs> it's great! He's like, I have to find her! I have to! I have to find her! <laughs> and, like, and then there's, they all have this look on their faces like, oh my god, he's gone completely fucking insane. And for me, like, a big part of it for me is just the interactions. Like, I, I love how, like, nobody's a spiteful bitch this time around, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Like, no one's catty, no one's, you know, you know, being snotty or stupid. Which I'm, I'm not saying they won't be to each other, but it's just like, you know, there's no mean spirit spiritedness this time around. It's all very... Yeah, you had talked before about how, especially in the dub, they were very at oh, the each dub. other. In the dub, they turned it up to a, like up to eleven, dude. They were just all over each other, very, mm -hmm. you know, very bitch, bitch, skank, whore, bitch, skank, skank, whore. Like they were like aggressively going after each other because you know everybody had to be the best. The best. You know, it's not like they're on a team together or anything. Mm -hmm. We don't understand how teams work here in America. You gotta There's be a VIP. Line. Or MVP. MVP, there we go. Yeah. Sports. <laughs> I particularly. I saw. I saw. Anyway. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. What? A really bad pickup line. Oh. <laughs> how do you spell me? M E, you forgot the D. There's no D. There's no D in me. Well, there's. Would you like there to be? Or there's about to be, or something like that. I was like, uh, oh my god, that's bad. I, I particularly. What now? I thought I heard something playing. Oh, I don't know. It's gone now. <laughs> There's nothing going on here. There's clearly nothing. Here. But, uh, no, that, that made me laugh. Mm -hmm. Um, no, my, uh, pickup lines are really funny because they're either just, like, horribly sexist or they're so stupid, like, they're really, really stupid, but they work. Like, like the last couple of times I went out with, with Ray and his buddies, I picked up, I've, I've, uh, picked up a couple waitresses numbers just by using my cupcake line. <laughs> Should I repeat it for posterity? Yes. Hello, my good lady. My name is Dr. Cupcake. I come to bring you the good news of my lord and master, the holy the holy donut. <laughs> it works! <laughs> oh, I'm sad. Yes, but I this this line has got me the response. Wow, what a pussy magnet! And not in the sarcastic sense of the word. It's the overbearing confidence of giving the line in such a way. I'm not even making this shit up. It's it's hilarious. It's all about confidence. Like I know I ain't got a shot in hell. But it's all about the confidence of, of uttering the line. <sighs> I told Raid the next time I go out that he's got to use a line like that. I'm Raid and I'm sad. Can you give me your number? You know, that might actually work. <laughs> oh, poor Raid. I, I feel really bad for Raid because it's like, like, we constantly talk about it, but neither of us really want to go out and try to, like, meet girls. But he wants a girlfriend, like, really badly. Like, he's really, really lonely, and I just, like, 
Like we need to just, I, I don't know where we're gonna go or do, but we need to like we need to find him a date like ASAP. Sorry, all the women I know are either taken or in California in general. So. Exactly. I haven't dated since high school, so No. And yeah. even before then I never really dated. I had sex, that's different. So well, I know me it was always just a thing about meeting people. Like I never actually like I've never actually like well, I shouldn't say it. Like as an adult I've been on dates. Wink wink nudge nudge. But like mm-hmm. it never goes anywhere. Also because I'm a hate filled monster. But that's a whole different issue. Yeah, like I I don't think I would know how to go about dating. So probably the big sucks, one though. is just you know the big one for men is just, hey, you know, if you treat women like human beings, it actually works really well. Like, mm. it, it's fucked up like that. It also helps if you don't just automatically expect that you're going to score. Yeah. Like, like, dude, don't start out with the dick. You get there eventually. Calm down. Hey, surprisingly, if you're a decent human being, it usually just happens anyway. Not not the first date, but you know what I mean. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Depending on how you make any connections like, with you know, people, they want to you know do stuff with you. Yeah. Like if puppy died or something, I don't know if I could bother to date. Well, that's a problem for a lot of people. Is it's like like once you get comfortable, you find somebody that you can like you know spend the rest of your life with. You're not really in a hurry. Yeah. To you know. But- there's a mixture of him plus this horrid body. I'm not sure I would want to go about dating. Yeah. I don't think I would care. Well, it might be it might be different if you weren't you know if you're if you weren't in pain and whatnot too. Yeah. I mean, my thing is like I just don't know where I would go to meet people that would actually well, meet women that would actually want to like date. Because mm-hmm. the kind of girls that, like, you pick up in a bar are not normally the kind of people that, like, I would personally want to date. So it's like, okay. But I, I told Ray, I'm like, I'm like, hey, man, if you want to go to the bar and meet girls, I'll go with you and wingman, man. Like, I don't give a shit. So there's only one problem, Cupcake. He's like, if we go to the bar, you're going to pick up all the chicks. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Oh, cupcake for the ladies' man. It's not the kind of ladies' uh, Apparently, you that's what everyone tells me. They're like, you're just, you're a chick magnet. I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't know where you people are getting this idea, but you're way off base. My self-loathing could fill a, could fill a damned reservoir, but I digress. Yes, let us digress. To what? I don't know. I have no idea either. Um, do we have any topics left to talk about? Yeah, we kind of unintentionally went over the friendship talk topic when we were talking about slice of life and depictions of w- women interacting with another one another. That's sort of what I wanted to get into. Yeah, friendships are always interesting because with guys, it's always like they just score with her yet. I mean, seriously, that, that's what all, like, anime is with male characters. It's always, if it's a guy and his best buddy, it, they're always like, did you score with her yet? Or how far did you get? It's like, wow. Way to just make this all about sexual conquest. Yep, because you're men. I mean, don't get me wrong. In real life, we we do talk like that to each other. But it's not like the first thing that comes out of our mouth in the morning. Yeah, it's not like the exclusive conversation. Just like, women don't exclusively talk about looking for a, a guy. Yeah. It's like it's almost like we're, we're all people and we talk about other things like life and uh well generally like I mean, and shit. Uh what am I trying to say? Uh generally it's more about like, you know, how did the date go? What was you know what did you guys do? Did did she, did she have fun? Did you have fun? You know, like, how well did you do? Mm-hmm. Did she want to kill you when it was over? 
you know, I, 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 I feel like that's a good show, even though the mid part, you kind of vanished. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Hey, at least I didn't play the screen. I mean, your failure's been so bad lately that you just, you know. I'm rubbing off on you. Yeah, it, it came through the network and blew my computer out. <laughs> Still made reaction. I have no, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure that what was happening was there was a there was a glitch like from when we first started, and it just it finally hit hard about halfway through. All right, well then, let's call it here. All right. Thank you for once again listening to the Super Happy Fun Jabbertron Tea Party Podcast with Kiki and Bones, guest starring Kiki's noisy chair and the failed Robo Uprising. Farewell and be safe my fleshy comrades. Thanks for listening. Good night, Bones! See you later!